HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Beate Chalette. Beate is the growth architect and provides visionaries with clear steps to improve business systems, to maximize profits, and scale impact. A first-generation immigrant with $135,000 in debt, single-parent Beate bootstrapped her passion for photography into a global business and sold it for millions to Bill Gates. She hosts the Business Growth Architect Show and is in the top 100 global thought leaders and one of 50 must-follow women entrepreneurs by HuffPost. Thanks so much for joining me today, Beate. Diane, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to have you here, and we're going to be talking about scaling impact and and which I, I find fascinating. So I want to just start with what does it mean to scale your impact? I love that question. The reason I choose scale impact is because I looked at sort of all the things that we typically say about what we want, you know, that are connected to our purpose and our mission in life. And typically a business owner would say, I want to grow my business. Some will say, I want to be able to make enough money so I can hire good people so that they can make money, they can build lives, want to build the community. So we, as we build our businesses, really need to get clear around what is it that connects deeply with our purpose and mission. And after the pandemic hit and everything went to pieces for just about everybody I know, and we had to do the, the, the pivot. I sat down and I thought about what really, really motivates me. And because I sold a business to Bill Gates and because I've made good money, I was like, what is it about for me? Yes, I like to make money, but what it is really about for me is to make an impact, to see the lights come on, to help uh, the single mom that is newly divorced to build the business so she can have a multiple six-figure income and take her daughter to these fancy uh, five-star resorts, which she shares openly on Facebook. And I'm like, you know, that girl got it going on now. And taking <laughs> and, and taking her out of that, you know, tearful moment of, I can't believe this is happening to me, to look at me in my skimpy bikini, you know, building sandcastles with my daughter, um, which that excites me. Or when I work with a woman who is a data scientist who came up with this absolutely brilliant idea how to build a framework around ethical use of artificial intelligence in search engines. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking about the impact that this makes 
that me helping her to influence how globally for a large luxury company, the search engine on the online searches is going to be changed, that that's impact. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it is about scaling impact. It's me helping my clients to scale their impact. And I measure my own impact and how many I help. I see. I love this concept. As you were talking about it, I was thinking um, that is, you know, when people say to me, what inspires you? My answer is always the people who I interact with who get it figured out and achieve these incredible things that they have always wanted to achieve. Like that's, that's what matters. Like I do the podcast so that I can get this kind of information in front of as many people as possible. And, and I'm only one person, you know, so it was, well, if I do this, then I'll be able to do that. And if I bring in these people who have this expertise, then I can do that kind of thing. So I feel like it, when we focus on that, then our, our business, um, it's not the word I'm looking for, our contribution is more satisfying. Yes, I think it. What you what you're talking about is exactly the idea of the our value proposition, and and you know when we talk about the value proposition, I think a lot of times it's also misunderstood from the perspective of, you know, sitting down and drafting something so less that sounds kind of good, <laughs> but if we really think about what is the value proposition, what's the value that I bring. And then I break it down and I say the value I bring is that I can design a system and a strategy and a workflow just about anything. And then, you know, no matter how crazy or outrageous the idea or how boring the idea might seem and make it make it something that really can provide something for other people, because we as consultants help other people to live better lives or to make more money or to help more people. So the value, my value is really determined by the value that I can provide. And so I have to believe in that value myself in order then to go out. And then I can almost like step back, Diane, and say, I don't have to make it about profit. I don't have to make it about KPIs, ROIs. I can make it about, if I measure, if I measure my success by how many people I can help to scale their impact, I'm automatically making money. I'm already making making all of these things and they right. come as a side effect. It's not possible otherwise. Right, exactly, right. And do you think uh, that, that it um, changes the way someone thinks about their business and how and what they're offering? Like it feels to me like thinking about impact um, and scaling impact becomes expansive. Like I can think about my business differently. Okay, if I want to scale my impact, what does that look like? Is that the kind of thing that? Yes. Is, is that one of the value propositions of it? Yeah, you 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 you're spot on. So so this is what happened. Is you know when you know my story is not the prince's story. So my story is a story of adversity and hard knocks and we're not talking about little things we're talking about big, big things fires floods riots earthquakes september 11th a lawsuit a tsunami and now i added a pandemic to my ever-growing repertoire of <laughs> adversity to overcome so so you look at this and there comes sometimes a point in life where you are angry and you you go why am i so why am i so angry about this it's like because you get into that why is this happening to me and this is not normal that one person has to overcome all this adversity. What am I doing that I'm deserving all of this? And you get into this spiral of victimhood and yeah. self-pity and 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 really being a crybaby. And then you go and you say, well, how do I get out of it? And so I started to really get into mindset, a lot of mindset work. And what I learned, you know, I knew this, but I had forgotten because I got sloppy in my my practice that you have to be grateful for what you already have to start shifting that energy. And then think about 
how much you love what you do and how much you love that you're making this impact. So if I focus on this client I just signed today, then I'm now going to help them to provide these luxury made to order jewelry pieces that some wonderful man or woman somewhere in the world is wanting to gift to their loved one. If I think about on how much joy that brings, I'm energetically creating a different level of uh, what I'm allowing to come to me because it's coming from this place of, of being a servant, of providing the value, of lending the expertise. It doesn't come from, thank God I made the money. I can't wait for the money to be in the bank so then I can pay my bills. It's a different energetic vibration. And so to your point, it becomes much more expansive because then the message that we're sending energetically out to universe, God, the spirit, whatever, whatever it is that you believe in now can multiply because it's a different frequency. I saw something. I want to just share this really quick with you, Diane. Yeah. Um, I saw a little like, you know, um, video on Instagram and it was a guy who sat with a guitar at a lake that was had like lots of bugs. And when he would uh, strike a chord, all the bugs for like a nanosecond moved on the lake. And then he stopped and everything was calm again. And then he, uh, you know, he strummed the guitar again and then you could see all the bugs. And it was such a great, simple example of seeing on how an energetic vibration has an actual effect on our surroundings. And that really makes me remember if we stay in this vibration, we can achieve so much more. And as we achieve more for other people, automatically we achieve more. Right, exactly. Okay, you um, designed this five-star success blueprint and I would love it if you would tell the listeners uh, you know, about what it is and what the five stars are, please. Yes, so the five-star success blueprint was designed because one of the things that I think every business needs to have is a system. When you have a system, you don't talk about yourself. It's not I, 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 I. Then you can say uh, the system that we are following is this system. And this is the way the system works. And this is you know, where we are diagnosed within the system, what's going on with you or your business. And then we can help you and programs and services are designed to, uh, to help you with some of these common problems that we see happen in a misalignment when the system is not working properly. So that's why I create a system. And I, and I do this for a lot of my clients where I help them actually create their signature system because it just helps us so much more with sales. You can sell more, you can sell to more people and you can sell more often. And you're already preceding all your future programs. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a, a smart way to run a business. So in my system, the Five Star Success Blueprint, because I am a business strategist, I look at how the business is being built. And there is a way to build a business chronologically. In the first step, it's about the idea. The idea is always what comes first. What is it that I'm doing? Why am I the right person who is doing it? Who are the people that I am solving problems for? What are the problems that I'm having? And why am I the right person to do this? What, what, what qualifies me to do that? So you need to really flush this out in that first step. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the second step and you go and design the offer. This is where already a lot of businesses go wrong is where they design the offer before they even ever thought about who they're selling to. And then they kind of like start thinking about who this product or service that they're offering. You know what I'm talking about, Diane? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. Uh, or if you've, or, 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 or if you, if you've done it, go, please go back to step number one and, and, and get the clarification and then look at your offer and make sure that the offer actually solves the problem that that target avatar, we call this the airtight avatar actually has. Yeah. Now, once you have this offer that solves the problem, you go to building your systems and the systems we automate before we hire. So you want to figure out what are all the systems that I need to have in place, my lead generation system, my sales systems, my closing system, 
my um, you know, client attraction piece, how I am delivering my products or services. So everything needs to be systematized at that point. Once you have figured out what you can systematize, then and only then are you going to the fourth star and that is the team. Then you hire, because then you know who you need to operate the systems that provide the offer right. to solve the problem for the person that you want to serve. Right. And then the final step in the five star success blueprint then is, then we look at you as a leader and we say, who do you need to be? And what do you need to know? And how do you need to lead the team that operates the systems that manages the offer that solves the problem? So that's the five star success blueprint. Boy, I love that. I love because it, it is a system and it's got structure to it and um, and and it's linear, right? You got to start here and move down the path instead of trying to jump over and expect any of it to work. Yes. And, and Diane, I'm sure that you see this in your work all the time as well is that people like jump to the things that they like, like, you know, yeah. I'm, because I, I love systems. I could happily be in designing systems all day long. While that is great. That's not really so good for my business. I, I need to, you know, also build these other pieces so it just helps you to get back to uh, the basics and say, did I identify what my avatar is? Did I identify what problem I'm solving? Did I, is this even still relevant? And that's an encouragement I really want to give to all of your listeners today is to look at if what you're offering is still relevant after all that we have been through and in the last uh, couple of years and make sure that your language is relevant to what people are experiencing right now, because it is constantly moving and adjusting. So you, you know, I heard something really interesting that made me think about that, where my daughter told me that a Gen, a Gen Z is making fun of the millennials because Gen Z has a particular way to start a video on like Instagram or YouTube. And millennials and everybody above that, you know, do it the old school way. <laughs> and so there's like a, oh, yeah, that's a dead giveaway for, you know, for an old person. Uh, so so that's kind of the thing that I'm referring to when we're building these systems and we're talking about who are we serving. Make sure that you constantly adjust the language. That is so interesting. And I'm so glad you said that, that it needs to be revisited because things really have changed and people's needs and companies' needs are different now than they were before the pandemic. And, you know, the way people are navigating the world is really tremendously different for, I think, just about everybody. So it's such a good idea to take a step back and look and make sure that you're still, what you offer is still relevant. Or is yeah. there a way that you can modify it so it's more relevant? 100%. And then the second question is, do you still want to do it? Is yeah, that even, boy. Uh -huh. is it even still relevant for you? Do you still want to offer that? Is that still, is that still aligned with you? Is that still aligned with your values? So yes, that's why that's why I wanted this five that the five star success blueprint is set up like a like a star yeah. and in a circular motion because I want people to remember this never never ends. You constantly right. adjust. Crypto is like the financial system, but different. It doesn't care where you come from, what you look like, your credit score, or your outrageous food delivery habits. Crypto is finance for everyone, everywhere, all the time. Visit kraken.com slash see what crypto can be to learn more. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Ventures, Inc. View PBI's disclosures at kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures. eBay Motors is here for the ride. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. 
Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right. Are you finding that that people are really reevaluating and discovering that what they offered is not so relevant to them anymore? 100%. Wow. All the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. I think that there's really the two pieces I just mentioned that tie into that. Number one, it is now that I've gone through this change in the pandemic and I lost people and I saw what it's like when I spend more time at home with myself, my friends and family, the question what matters now is really a question that is a universal worldwide, a global question right now. And I think as consultants, service providers, business owners, we do have to ask our clients and say, what has changed for you? What is relevant for you? What do you want to achieve? And help them to find a much deeper answer and hook it into their purpose. Because the idea of just making money, while that is a, you know, obviously we're in business to make money. But if that what drives you, you're not fueling your passion. And what I am seeing is that there is a much deeper desire to have purpose and yeah. vision and wanting to be connected to that. Yeah. Are you, I, are I you to- experiencing this? Yes, completely. Okay. Yeah. 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 I totally agree with that. People really, uh, you know, we are reevaluating constantly now where before I think we were just so used to this is the way we do things you know this is the way business operates but boy ever since the pandemic it it's hang on a second you know it's there was so much loss that people are really thinking about what they value what matters to them how they want to be spending their time and it's different I think it's good but you know I mean I think it's good for all of us to I think it's great. I, you know, from if I look at this from an energetic perspective, and I say, what happened pre pandemic? What were we asking for? We said, we're never home. We're traveling too much. Traffic is insane. Yep. We um, don't have time for our families. We don't have time for home cooked meals. We, we can't even enjoy our own home because by the time we get home, it's really late. Then you, you know, me want, want, want to watch a show or two. You have dinner in front of the TV. And then you crash only to get up and and do this all over again. And the pandemic really has changed that dramatically. So it's like the universe listened to the world and said, oh, you all are unhappy. Let me, (laughs) let let me help you out. Great idea coming your way. I'm going to shut everything down. Yeah, boy. Right. I can do something about that. The great reset. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about strategy. Do you, um, can anyone or can everyone learn strategy, do you think? Yes, I do. I I think for some people, it is more innate. And for other people whose yeah. brains just don't work that way, they probably do really want to consider hiring a strategist or somebody who can, who can help them uh, take these ideas and systematize them or structure or organize them. But strategy is really not that, not that difficult. I think strategy is a understanding of what it actually is and and if it's okay with you Diana I'm just going to talk maybe a couple minutes about this to help people to maybe de-stress a little bit when they That'd be great <laughs> when they hear the word strategy so <laughs> there is an overall strategy an overall strategy is where do you want to go with your business that is is it a laptop a lifestyle business is it about freedom is it about um, equity is it about selling your business and depending on what the outcome is that you want to achieve that is what drives the overall business strategy so there's an overall business strategy that determines the business model now you also need to look at your own personality and say realistically what do i want what do i not want and one example i always give is somebody who breaks out in hives when standing in front of a crowd should probably not do public speaking <laughs> as, uh, as a lead generation idea yeah. unless they want to overcome that. 
So make sure that you are doing whatever you're doing is aligned with what you what you, what what really resonates with you. And then you look at all the many different sub strategies that there are. So for example, speaking is a lead generation strategy. Podcast hosting is a lead generation strategy. Podcast guesting is a lead generation strategy. Networking events is a lead generation strategy. Conferences is a lead generation strategy. So there are so many different of these strategies out there that you want to just become very discriminatory and say, what are the strategies that exist and which one of these are the ones that I think work for me? So another example, we signed up for a program with um, two women who are doing Facebook, uh, Facebook strategy and going viral and, and, you know, learning on how to post. And what we found when we got into their strategy is that it was really geared for women who want to take a side hustle and make some extra money. And then we realized this strategy is not for us because we work with we work with business owners who need right. a strategy. And so the 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 posts that went viral were the posts um say what you do without uh, in without telling us what it is, which is in my world completely useless. Yeah. But 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 it works for them to kind of get the engagement and the excitement. Yeah. So we we signed up for it. We 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 tried it for a couple of months and then we went like this is not going to give us any results. And then we said, okay, that's not a strategy we need. We canceled the subscription and we moved on to a LinkedIn a strategy and we're doing executive roundtables, which is much, much more aligned with the kind of clients that we are serving. So misunderstood in strategies always, you don't have to follow someone's strategies. You don't have to make all the strategies work. You just kind of got to look at this from the perspective of dating like date the strategy for a little bit and then see if you get results, if it works, and then you let it go and find another one or you continue. I love that. That's so great. It's, it's at, I'm so glad that you gave those examples as well, because I firmly believe that's what most of us do is we listen to someone and someone says, this is what you need to be doing. We go, okay. And then we get into it and we spend way too much time with it. It doesn't get us the results that we need. And, and I, I think a lot of people then feel like they must be doing something wrong. They must be failing in some way because after all, it's working for that person instead of saying, okay, this just isn't the right strategy for me. Yes, exactly. I, I, I loved the way you, uh, you summed this up because that is in essence what it is. And that's what we really help our clients with and you know I have a podcast called the business growth architect show where we only talk about strategies and we, we do a new strategy every week for that reason I my, my goal really is to help business owners to detach themselves from the from the fear that they're failing if something doesn't work but rather to have that kind of cool attitude about it. That sounds like a good strategy. You know, I, I, I can do videos on YouTube. Let's, let's, uh, let's go out and do that. And then look at it and say, do I enjoy it? Is the workflow is, 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 is this aligned with who I am? Am I coming across the way I want to come across? Am I reaching the right people? Are the right people resonating with the message? And then and then you decide, am I going to continue to do that or not? There is no book out there right. that says you have to, you know, be on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups, uh, LinkedIn newsletter, LinkedIn live, Clubhouse, um, am I, uh, Snapchat, am I a Twitter it, it, that just just talking about it gives me gives me <laughs> it makes me it makes me so you can't just pick pick a couple that are aligned with where your clients are yeah and you know i think then it's so much more fun yes. when you aren't so tied to this has to work 
Yes, yes, because the the then we go back to what we talked about originally. So if you want to scale your impact, yeah, then then the question just is, am I scaling my impact? Is yeah. this fun? Am I reaching the right people? And if it doesn't work, I mean, it's, it's like when we, you know, when we meet someone, you know, a lot of these are are correlating with dating. You meet somebody and at first they're like amazing and you go, wow, this is the coolest person I've ever met. And then you talk to them a couple of times and then you find out that they're backstabbers and that uh, mm -hmm. they are spreading rumors about you and you go, I never would have expected that. And then you go, I don't think I can have this person in my life. And you let that go. And then you're disappointed and you go, yeah, that was an interesting experience. You learn from it and you move on and you do the best you can to never let somebody like this back into your life. Right. And business strategies are the same way. You are not a failure. You're not a loser if something doesn't work. It's just, I compare it to if you were to have a GPS on your phone or in your car and you put an address in that, you know, maybe you've even been to before, and then you set out to drive and suddenly they changed it because they're building a new freeway. And this road that you've always taken is now a cul-de-sac. So now you don't get out of the car. You don't throw yourself on the ground. You don't throw a Tampa tantrum. You don't start crying. I don't understand why my GPS is taking me here. You, you just go, oh, okay. Uh, this is uh, apparently a way I shouldn't go. And then you turn around and you find another way. And the GPS auto adjusts when you do that. So it is just like that with strategies. You know, don't throw a temper tantrum. Just just somebody's there with a the stop sign set. Not for you, buddy. And then just do something else. And look at the new path as an adventure because it's potentially a way you've never gone before. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love all of this. This is so great. I mean, I like strategy anyway and structure. And I think, you know, we absolutely have to have it in order to be successful. But I love how it's also attached to the scaling your impact. And, you know, that that when that's where our focus is, it, it just feels like it just lights up everything around the business. So boy, thank you so much for sharing this whole concept with us. Uh, my pleasure. Happy to help any way I can. I would love it. So would you please, speaking of which, would you please let the listeners know how they can find you, whatever you've got going on that you think they should know about? Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. So we talked about the Airtight Avatar, the Avatar. So I have a, a free giveaway. It's called Airtight Avatar. You find it at airtightavatar.com. It takes you literally about 15 minutes and it's all like ready to be pre-filled out. And you'll figure out how many how many avatars you have. Uh, that's always a good exercise to just go through that and really recognize on how do you need to speak to them. So that's one. The second piece is I am uh, just launched a quiz, and the quiz is how to find your number one business growth locker. And this is was based up on many of the conversations I've had on these podcast interviews where I found people either missing a system, a strategy, or don't have a client attraction system in place. So you can take this quiz at a business. No, it's, it's so new that I don't, I have to remind myself what the URL is. I apologize. It's growthblockerquiz.com and, uh, and just go through the quiz and then it'll tell you exactly what your number one business growth blocker is. And then you get a report uh, to it that tells you exactly what that what that means. And other than that, I'm all over social media, YouTube, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, under Beate Schlett or The Growth Architect. Do reach out while we are at it. I do encourage you. Diane does this as a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe to the podcast. Give her a five-star review and write a couple words in it, maybe even send her a little thank you note, how much you appreciate what she does, because it does take a lot of time and effort to do this. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for that. And, yep. and thanks for sharing all this information. I'll make sure it's in the show notes as well, uh, you know, and in the blog post and all that. So everyone can get it, get both of those things. I think they're critically important. And I, I really, I am so grateful for spending this time with you. I, I feel um, 
uh, really energized to uh, to take a look at my impact and just from having this conversation about this. So I imagine so are a lot of people, you know, whoever's listening to this is, is doing the same thing. So thank you for the work you're doing. It's my, it's my pleasure. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. And if you're motivated and inspired, I've done my job. Right on. Thank you. And listeners, thank you. This is one of those episodes you're going to want to listen to a couple of times and you're going to want to go to those links and, you know, take the quiz and do the airtight avatar and, and really, uh, you know, make sure that you're focused in all the right places because it'll change your business. So. Thank you, everybody. Until we meet again. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. We are Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn, co-hosts of the Inclusive AF Podcast. We're two diversity, equity, and inclusion peeps who love both what we have in common and what makes us different. During the day, we use our superpowers to block bias and break down systems that are inequitable within companies and create inclusive AF places to work. We're also BFFs who have tough conversations about our different lived experience. Come have a listen and learn something new.